evening everyone and welcome back to the English shooting live stream nice to see uh, some familiar faces um, and a load of people waiting I do appreciate that it's gonna be an interesting evening I actually thought as I was planning out the stream this uh, this week there wasn't a huge amount in terms of news obviously the the main um, the main bit of news is Beretta um, and Holland and Holland and the uh, once again the image has come through on the uh, on the screen far brighter than it looks on my screen so it's uh, it's a little bit bright I might tweak that down Let, uh, give me two secs I was getting a little bit dazed by that by that light now I look complete pitch black on my preview screen and it's gonna be um, hopefully just right but let me know obviously usual deal if there's any issues uh, any technical issues you can't hear me can't see me that's probably not the worst thing in the world um, then just let me know and I'll try and sort it out but yes the big news is of course uh, Beretta purchasing um, Holland and Holland Holland and Holland being quite a big name within the UK or uh, let's say the uh, international am i am i out of focus as well this is this is a great start to the stream i think i'm actually out of focus have i got auto focus on it should teach me to be more prepared shouldn't it well that that would teach me for having a brand new setup um so I do have a, a bit more. This is, this is going absolutely fantastically. I've, I've had a few weeks of great streams and then it's all going to shit in one. Um, so I do have a little bit more of a setup. I've got a permanent setup now for the like permanent mount for the camera and um, an actual mic arm. So I can uh, I can swing that, can bring that really close so we can get some really, really sexy. Um, or, or that's for my, my other streams that I do, but you do have to pay for those. Uh, but yeah, so Holland & Holland, one of the biggest names within sort of UK British gun makers they've been uh, around for a couple of hundred years uh, but there's a a name that sort of supersedes any firearms manufacturers in terms of the length of time that they've been going and that's of course Beretta. Beretta are actually the oldest firearms manufacturer in the world they've been going on uh, now for nearly 500 years I think it is um, and something that's not widely well known is that a lot of these companies aren't just private or they aren't just you know owned um, by a few individuals they're usually owned by huge groups so anyone that's looked into Beretta before you will see that there's Beretta but above that there's Beretta Holdings and Beretta Holdings own like half of the firearms industry you know they they own Benelli, um, Stoga, Tika, Seiko uh, I think maybe I think it's Boris I did I'm, I'm actually gonna make a separate video on this so I have been doing some some research I know surprise shock um, yeah Boris uh, Steiner uh, Vitrix uh, Franchi Uberti so loads of big names um, and that's all held under Bretta Holdings and Holland and Holland was actually owned by Chanel and yes the handbag cosmetic perfume um, the manufacturer or supplier whatever you want to call them the fashion brand and they owned holland and holland and i'm going to get into you know whether that's good or bad and sort of where they've uh, where they've been what they've done with the company and and sort of where the future of it's going where, where the future of holland and holland is going to go being owned now by beretta so uh, let me know what you think uh, and i'm going to try you know see what you guys say about it maybe you've got a bit more information than than i do and i will be making a full video in depth um that probably won't be out of focus and have the right lighting and, and won't be live and catastrophic like it it is this this evening but you've grown to love and uh, and know this setup so uh, anyway again it's the standard setup this isn't just to talk about these these big things within the shooting industry these big points uh although i do have have a few and there there has been one that has been um developing actually right up until going live uh, involving Basque so there's going to be a bit of Basque bashing uh, we know we uh, love that but of course you can have a chat as well and I've just noticed thank you very much Daddy Kyle helping support the uh, uh, <laughs> start supporting the stream oh you're paying for it now does this does this mean we, we do have to get sexy um, 
I swear you want my top off. You know, that, that's just been a consistent thing going on for, for a number of months now. You seem to tip until um, I'm going to strip myself naked. But, but anyway, um, moving on swiftly. So yes, it's a chance for you to bring up topics to talk about anything you want to you wanna talk about, any questions you have, if you're, you're looking, um, looking into starting up shooting and you, you don't know where to start, this is now the time to just ping a question and I'll try my best to uh to to get towards your questions and to, to answer as many questions you have of course while you're here make sure you hit the like button it helps with the stream i say it every time it helps with the analytic uh, analytics it helps grows it um, and it helps make the channel bigger and better reaching more people get more people shooting um, and if you want to um like kyle support even further then you can use the uh the super chats and you can um sort of donate to the to the channel and it will highlight your comment and there's certainly a much bigger chance of me seeing it and not completely ignoring it so uh thanks again carl for that really uh, really appreciate it uh, not a huge amount of, of questions so far. We do have David, uh, who had a very uh, interesting evening um, the other evening with Target Shooting UK. I was actually quite impressed how many, if, if for, the, for those of you that missed it, uh, so Target Shooting UK is quite a, a new sort of channel. There's a YouTube channel, a Facebook page, and he, he managed to get quite a lot of people on that and have a fairly good discussion about where things are going in the sport, how... It can be improved for maybe say new members this that and the other um Kiv, uh, david kiddle i i uh, like almost wet myself when you went on there um david has a reputation for not exactly sitting on the fence where certain matters are concerned so i think it was in 20 or 30 seconds of being on this live stream following so we had multiple get, guests going on and off um, and prior to David going on, there was somebody from the NSRA, and that's the National Small Ball Rifle Association. Uh, they're based at Bisley. They are within the, Ro the Lord Roberts Centre. There's actually a number of videos on the channel uh, previously filmed down there uh, before they uh, and I had a, a little bit of a disagreement. Um, but literally 30 seconds into this stream, and David goes, look, you've just had someone here from the NSRA. I will give a thousand pound a day to be able to use your range for speed stills. Um, please, David, let me know if uh, anyone comes back to you on that offer. Uh, but it did sort of start this um, conversation of, again, it's sort of like the the them and us sort of situation, and but but more importantly, where our organisations are going, what they are doing or not doing for us and whether it's beneficial for the sport as a whole. And anybody that's been in the uh, in the Discord, uh, again, something that I, I like to, to talk about each week, a brilliant place for new information and having a general chat at any time of the day about shooting sports. Um, hopefully somebody watching will plug a link in for me because um, it's it's just too much for my, for my brain to, uh, to do that while streaming. And we got into a bit of a chat, I think it was uh, yesterday afternoon, um, where I, I went on a bit of a, a, a rant about our organisations. And it was off of the back of David's comment. And it's this is, this is so... It, it repeats itself so many times that we see with our, with our big organisations. They have these amazing facility, uh, facilities. They have the expertise and the knowledge and the potential and opportunity to really excel the sport and get you know be a gateway into the sport and there just seems to be time and time again missed opportunities i know that kfc who are my home office approved club they have cancellations on bisley like every single time more often than not any booking will be cancelled by by bisley or the nra now some people think that that might be because they're practical and you know Bisley or NRA doesn't like practical um, but I don't think it it's it's I think there might be a little bit of that but also inefficiencies and just sort of mismanagement with the range booking so you know Bisley anyone that's been to Bisley it's a huge site you could fit like 50 KFCs in there not not like that KFCs but Kentucky Firearms Clubs um, in Bisley on one day all at the same time and everyone would still be able to get get to shoot um, but 
it just seems like a lack of utilization and then you have a facility like the lord roberts center which is an absolutely amazing facility but it's empty most of the time and the busiest time that i've ever seen it was whilst they had weddings or ice hockey practice there and i'm like sorry is this not arranged like why why have we got all these ice hockey people and and the, the issue is that whilst they're doing those events they're not able to do other shooting events so the shooters suffer because they want to get income from the hockey players and the weddings where it's like well why not advertise more get more people using the range and taking in money in terms of range fees and then you won't have to shut down ranges to raise money from people that aren't shooting um so yeah i'm very interested david to see what they come back with um in terms of that offer but that that is a solid uh, offer and i know a hundred percent it's a it's a solid offer from you Let, let's see if they um they want to well i think i was talking to connor's about it it's not it's not a case of them putting their money where their mouth is you've literally put the money in front of their mouth for them um you know it's a win-win for them Let, let's see if they do it uh, very british do you think that bolt actions are obsolete in a military role and if so how disadvantaged is a soldier soldier with a bolt action compared to one with a semi just curious no ill intent uh well again i have to say that i'm most definitely a sport shooter so in terms of military and combat and you know the the army uh or in a military role i'm not going to be the the ex you know, in, in any way shape or form an expert to be able to truly comment on it but comparing the semi-automatic and a bolt action it it all comes down to the person behind the gun if you have somebody with a semi-auto yes they might have a 30 round magazine and they might be able to you know let off uh, you know a couple of shots a second if they're not very accurate if they're not very familiar with the the firearm and they're not getting shots on target then if you know if you're missing nine out of ten times and you're only getting one target you know one shot on target then the bolt action is actually going to be better well so somebody somebody better like a better shooter with a bolt action is potentially going to be more accurate and and in the case of military roles um more deadly than somebody with a semi-auto uh, and you see it in you know modern military and uh an army sort of techniques um and you know the, the the way that certain units are deployed there are still snipers and they are using bolt action rifles because there is quite an increase in accuracy to be had from the the bolt locking up that you don't get so much with the with the semi-autos so you know it's um well perfect example actually is some of you will notice i do have a guest this evening let's see how long it takes for you to uh um to work out um perfect example american sniper i mean you know chris kyle wasn't um you know this the, the story of chris kyle wasn't that long ago um and of course famously he's using a bolt action rifle you know he was a sniper uh, in the um you know an american special forces he was using a bolt action it wasn't about being able to put as many bullets down range it was being uh, it was about being as effective as he could as he could be with the rifle that he that he had and i don't think anyone can say he wasn't um eff effective with that rifle you know long the longest confirmed kill shot at the time and i don't think you, that would be possible with with a semi-auto so you know it's it's really like you know, look at it like cars you can have a hatchback and you can have a pickup truck there's some things that a hatchback is going to do far better than the pickup truck but if you try and use a pickup truck like a hatchback you're not going to have a very good time and, and vice versa so there's i don't think bolt actions are in any way shape or form obsolete in in sort of a modern modern military environment they are just a very specific tool for a very specific job if you require that that role to be fulfilled then um then you need a then you need a bolt action uh let's um yes so for those of you that uh have seen that that is uh connor's uh behind me uh let's this is this was going to be a point for later on uh some of you haven't seen this photo if you again if you're in the discord thank you uh thank you oliver for putting uh the link there 
Um, for those of you in the Discord, you might be familiar with this. Come on, do it. Come on, focus. Oh, come on, you can do it. There we go. Um, so we couldn't really resist. This became quite a big thing in the in the Discord recently, and we just had to have these made. So these are uh, made actually, and and the final artwork was done by Sticky Bolt. So a big shout out to Sticky Bolt um, for fantab fantastic quality. Uh, if you want a a way of um, getting hold of those, uh, go and check out the Discord. We're going to do a special sort of discount for for discord members as that's where that that image came from uh but i thought where connor's hasn't been on the stream for a little while i would have him here uh, in sticker form dotted around so uh where you can play a game of spot the connor's and uh there's no prize but you you can do that um while i while i jabber on um so so yeah stickers will be available actually on maglo.co.uk at some point we are going to use them as a bit of a a gift slash giveaway slash you know special um sort of discord um uh discord discount so go and check out the discord if you want to get your hands on those thank you very much uh richard um is, is that meant to be an impression of me in the chair <laughs> um so lots of people saying uh mr e30 thanks for for joining as always uh, any more questions again get them in uh Sinner 2004 if you were to open your own range for practical shooting what would you say the must-haves are and what other facilities would you like to see at a range um this is going to sound a little bit silly um toilets like decent toilets at ranges there seems to be a um a distinct uh one minute i'm going to turn the lights up again because it's just looking a bit low quality might might be too bright now but it should come through a little little better um yeah toilets it sounds like a silly one you would think well who would build a range without toilets um yeah just you know, go go to a go to a range in the uk and you, you'll find out um and decent toilets at that like and also within the range a decent place to sort of hang out and chill like a club room um that looks far too bright now what is going on i should have just left it but i'm trying to get the perfect setup i've, I've now got it where most of this is permanent so it shouldn't move or change from uh, from week to week but anyway let's carry on um, perfect what are the must-haves of a practical shooting range so um, when you say must-haves are you talking about guns as well so I would definitely say you need a mix of firstly some section ones and section two uh, shotguns because of course you know you, you need some beginner gear so people without licenses can um, can shoot it and you need some you know section ones there although you can't really have club section ones so that doesn't really work so no no club section ones um smith and wesson 1522 rifles because you can shoot anyone can shoot those under the mini rifle exemption um so a barrage of those and if you're completely spazzy um and a complete idiot you go and get some chris vectors in two twos for club guns why anyone would do that i don't know but some some people are just crazy enough to do it um, but yeah, covered firing points, um, a clubhouse, food, just the basic necessities. Um, that's what I would like to see. You know, some longer distance ranges. There's a lot of practical ranges that don't have um, that don't have long distances. And if you're going abroad a lot of the time, yes, in the UK, the maximum you're really going to ever go out to is like 100, maybe 150 yards with slug or maybe 2-2. But if you're going and shooting matches abroad, there's actually not a lot of places where in the UK where you can do sort of practical and have practical bays, but then go and sit at 400 yards and practice some sort of long range stills. So, um, but basically watch this space for what might happen with um, Kentucky Firearms Club. They have a few ideas of the perfect range and I'm sure they will, um, uh, we will see them hopefully come to fruition. Uh, people saying the brightness is fine, so thank you very much. Uh, maybe it's just because it's really, uh, really dim, and you don't you don't want to see my face. Um, so yeah, so back on to the to the main topic. Um, Holland Holland being bought by by Beretta. So we've covered that 
there's these these big companies that own a, a lot of other companies and this is actually quite common within the fashion and um, cosmetic industries so like Estee Lauder actually owns owns about 30 or 40 different brands Chanel which is a very secretive company there's there's not a lot of information out there about what companies and brands they own but they own well they have something like 350 associated companies um gucci again has loads of other companies underneath it so and and this is what we've also seen in the firearms industry as i was saying earlier with beretta holdings with beretta owning a lot of other manufacturers so so holland and holland has been owned by chanel for I think it's like over 30 years now so they haven't necessarily run it into the ground and from what i can understand they've actually done a very good job in uh, elevating the brand they've opened up um, international stores so of course there's the sort of flagship london store because it's a, a london gun maker a london british gun maker but they've opened up a number of uh, of other stores across the world i believe one being in uh, in new york and they've taken very much a, a fashion approach to the brand, which isn't, I don't think, the best for the gun making side of it, but great as a brand as a as a whole. And if you have a strong brand, that that's good in terms of sales. That's good in terms of your your marketability um, and your popularity. Now, I think some people within the the shooting world have been a bit critical of Chanel in turning it in turning Holland and Holland more into say an outdoor fashion brand but with other gun company UK gun companies closing down sort of you know withering into nothing um they've at least propped it up they've at least expanded uh, an aspect of the business that they didn't used to focus on which is the the clothes and say the the outdoor fashion style of things um and that that's ended up keeping the uh the gunsmithing going on and they've also put massive investment from what i've read online uh, into the factory into into the actual gun making so you know whether or not the the gun making is is better whether or not they've invested in in the gun makers themselves they've certainly invested in the equipment in the premises within the factory so uh, overall uh, overall i think handing it over to Bretta at this point is actually going to be really really good they've built a good brand they've they've got good marketability and not forgetting that Beretta very much cashes in on the fashion side of things. It would be interesting to see the split between what they actually make from guns and what they make from clothing and accessories. I mean, you know, I've probably I've probably spent half as much again on Beretta branded gear than I did on the on the Silver Pigeon um, its, uh, itself itself. Um, and so you guys can't see this comment, but apparently um, Tommy Malking. Uh, fucking hates me well i fucking hate you too there we go right back at you and and you can't say anything so screw you why you just come onto the stream and do that i don't know um but yeah so mr top gun 303 um i think beretta is uh, is a better owner for holland holland in in terms of the actual gun making and and gun smithing absolutely beretta are the oldest firearms manufacturer in the world you know there's very few companies that are more experienced than say the likes of holland and holland in gun making but beretta is one of them and i really think where chanel has pushed the brand of it the image of it the fashion of it now beretta are going to come in underneath that and prop up the um the skills and the tradition and the the the, the raw heart of holland and holland which is of course gun making so you know and, and as i was saying with beretta they're they're no idiots when it comes to fashion branding when it comes to the accessories so they should be able to carry on what chanel has been doing over the past um well you know 20 20 odd years 30, 20 30 years but also they have the expertise and the knowledge when it actually comes to the um, to the gun making itself so yeah i think it's going to be a, a great move for the company um you know being owned by beretta is not the worst thing in the world because they have deep pockets admittedly not as deep as chanel but they are able to keep companies going you know we, we are about to hit i think i don't think we've seen the true like economic effects of covid just yet and 
Holland and Holland being in possession of a of a big company like Bretter Holdings, if there is any downturn in sales, if there's any downturn in um you know in the company's turnover and revenue, Bretter's a big enough company to be able to suck that up and keep that name going. So it's you know maybe a little bit funny a prestigious British gun maker being owned by an Italian company, um, but that's the way it is. It still keeps it going. And and there's a there's a load of history that will be potentially saved um, because of it. So I think it's a it is fantastic. It does make a lot more sense for Holland and Holland to be owned by Beretta than it does say Chanel. But I don't think on on reflection Chanel have done a bad job at all um, in in elevating and keeping that that company going. Um, any other any other questions or topic you want to? Uh, you want to talk about or shall we get into some really juicy basque stuff that's going on um crypto sam what semi-auto 22 rifle would you recommend that is most realistic realistic to its full bore counterpart and is also full metal construction uh, in the 22 version so you've just completely removed away um, my go-to option which is of course the 1522 uh, but there is a video that i am working on as as well which is a, uh, a video comparing the 1522 directly to the Lantac um, LASF 15. Now, the reason I've done the LAS, the, the SF 15, and not, I think, my, my ultimate recommendation for a realistic 22 semi auto, uh, which would be the Cotswold Cl Classic Arms L119, I think it is. Um, is because the Lantac is is a more sort of standard option gun, sort of off the shelf and ready to go. Otto at, at Cotswold Classic Arms, whilst he makes fantastic stuff, there is a more of a, a bespoke element to it. And whilst the rifles start off cheaper than Lantac, I don't think it's going to take you very long in talking to Otto before that sort of thousand pound base price ends up becoming fifteen hundred, maybe two thousand uh, pound. So. I, if you've watched any of the videos on the 22 ARs, I would 100% hands down say the best mil spec, um, you know, like for like in terms of its 223 counterpart, uh, the best on the market is the Battle Arms, again made by Cotswold Classic Arms. They are going to run you around £3,000 though, depending on what options you go for. But that is, it's a mil spec AR upper and lower receiver set, and you could put a 223 barrel on it you could put a 223 bolt in in it and take it abroad and go and shoot it in semi-auto um but it's a cm cmmg conversion kit put inside of it so it's exactly the same as the 223 counterpart but just with a 22 conversion you can use the 1522 magazines i would i would say though again whilst th that's an option it's it's a very sort of bespoke custom option the, the Lantac guns are more off the shelf, say, readily available. And I say read, readily available, it will take you a year to get your hands on one because you know Lantac take a, take their sweet time. Um, but <clears throat> yeah, the in terms of rec recommendation, I guess go and speak to Otto at Coswell's Classic Arms. Go and talk to him about. Um, so the L one one nine is it's a aero pre precision um, receiver set. Again, exactly the same as a, as its 223 counterpart. Well, you could again make it into a 223, but he puts the CMMG conversion kit, a 223 barrel, uh, sorry, a 22 barrel on there, um, and he does the same with with the battle arms. The Lantac also uses the CMMG conversion kit. You can see a, a theme here, right? So the Lantacs again, you can have you can have one in 223, put a different barrel on it, put the CMMG conversion kit on it. And it's a two-two. Um, so I and despite my um, less than favourable opinion of the company of Lantac itself, the the LASF fifteen is a is a fantastic gun. I think actually on balance it's great value for money. Um, if you want a more bespoke, um, a more bespoke f sort of uh, interaction in terms of building and specking your gun, and you want perhaps arguably the best customer service you're going to get from an AR gun builder, go to Cotswold Classic Arms. If you're looking at the budget option, L119, if you if you're if money's if you literally want to stand there and set fire to your money, um, go for the the battle arms. Um, and if you want actually the 
the best 2.2 AR by 1522. Stop worrying that it's polymer. I've, I've put 30,000 rounds through mine. People have put far more than that through theirs and they're still going strong. But I understand the uh, the appeal of, of one thing, a full metal, full mil spec, realistic AR. I, I do get it, sort of. Uh, Mr. Top Gun, you can own as many rifles and pistols as long as you have good reason. Oh, I think you're answering somebody else's question there, so I'll leave you to that. Um, right, there's been a, a little bit of a, a development. Yes, Basque warning alert. Yes, this, we are going to get on to Basque. So I, I genuinely, so I'd started doing this list yesterday, and the first point that I put on there was... Uh, talking about a new vacancy at Basque um, and I'll bring that up now so if you go onto the Basque website right now you will see that they are uh, advertising for a, uh, a head of firearms now if you don't know about the structure uh, of, of Basque and what they do they have this specialist firearms team a, a lot of them are actually old FEOs so they're very knowledgeable about firearms law but they're also very knowledgeable about the police processes. So in terms of applying, in terms of the, in, in terms of having your certificates refused or revoked, they um, they can help out quite a bit because they've they've been on sort of both sides of it basically. So it's a very um, there's a wealth of knowledge within these teams, and they are recru recruiting for a head of this team. Now this is potentially worrying i don't know where the previous head of um of firearms for basque went uh that that might be a, a bit of a knowledge gap leaving there um, and this is certainly a big responsibility to um to take over and to to take on but if there if there's anybody well let's let's bring it back up or actually bring up the um uh let's have a look at the actual requirements uh so head of firearms i mean circa forty thousand pounds not not a bad um bad wage at all by any means uh, i know some people have commented saying that that's an absolute piss take because that's members money but this is a sort of a highly experienced highly skilled you, you're gonna have to really know your way around the law so you can see you know a successful candidate would demonstrate detailed experience of firearms and related legislation prior knowledge an experience of working within relevant and associated sectors, ability to provide a high standard of service to customers uh, within a similar environment, uh, the skill set needed to work with firearms officers to monitor, monitor firearms licensing practices, um, a professional method required to present, uh, re represent Basque at external meetings with key stakeholders. That's basically, let's say, the highlight reel of it. Now, I would absolutely love to apply for something like this there is no bloody way there there's not a snowball's chance in hell that they would even you know seriously um consider somebody like uh like myself to do it um although i i do i would like to say that i tick i do tick a lot of those boxes maybe the professional method not so quite um not, not so quite not quite so much so we say it's the jungle juice i'll blame that um, but yeah, so they're they're recruiting for this um, this new head head of firearms. It and again, I really can't stress how um, how critical this role is because at the end of the day, th this is going to be the person that ends up phoning up police firearms department and giving them what for. And and to be fair, that is what Basque does. They do. You get into these grey areas where the police technically haven't done anything wrong or they're not required to maybe progress an application or they're taking their time with it and you end up with this sort of gray zone and and i can tell you there's there's a recent case of somebody that um basically voluntarily surrendered their licenses but they weren't revoked or they weren't cancelled which means that you can't launch an appeal um, about that so you can't say well hang on a minute I'm appealing to that because nothing formal has actually happened and what Basque is very good at is going into those situations and reading the police of the riot act saying look you can't get away with this we know what you're doing buck your ideas up he, you know this mem this is a Basque member and we will stand behind them unfortunately 
that is now slightly weakened by the fact that they don't have the legal expenses insurance to be able to say, oh yes, and if you want to go to court, we are ready to go to court because we've got insurance. Well, well, yeah, Basque, Basque sort of threw that one under the bus. But what got really interesting is if anybody follows Mike Lindsay and um, what's happened with, um, well, there's been a few posts from Mike Lindsay and you know, he doesn't hold back. I, I, I will give him that. I know Mike quite well. We um, we do talk fairly regularly. We and Any of the shows we meet up and have a catch up. I have a lot of respect for what he does. Um, he does come at things from a, um, a slightly different angle, certainly more as the guns gun rights side of things whereas whereas i come at it more from the the sport of shooting um but he is very effective and he's had his nose put out of joint very slightly um by the whole debacle with the magazines where basque have basically written the the nor you know the the police in northern ireland a very strongly worded email uh, about these magazines but not done a lot else and um i, I i've been given permission to um kiddle would be a good candidate david kiddle as the head of hampshire uh, hampshire the head of basque's firearms department oh it would be beautiful it would be oh oh the target rifle shooters would be absolutely screwed for starters but practical would then just elevate to whole new whole new worlds it's like yes yes you're having issues with your um with your firearm application yes did you have a section one shotgun on there no well, I'm sorry, we just can't help you. Um, anyway, so basically back onto, onto this Basque, um, Duncan Thomas, and again, dumped out of all the people that sort of crop their head up or pop their heads up from Basque, I do have a lot of respect for Duncan Thomas because he's he's very much embraced social media in terms of going after the antis, in terms of getting the message out there. And, and again, he's not scared to hold back. Unfortunately... Um, I think Basque and and Duncan Thomas have gone way over the line with this. So Duncan Thomas, as I far as 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 Mike explained it to me, and this in, in, involves a guy called um, Tom Foster, who's is actually the sort of main person uh, behind all of this. Duncan Thomas posted this vacancy in one of the UK shooting groups, and very quickly. Um, people were going over there going requirement easily rolled over making comment on the fact that basque unfortunately seems to have a nice habit of rolling over when the government start getting a little bit tough rolling over and and basically giving in to maybe s save more of their preferred areas of the sport and and throwing perhaps areas that aren't so preferred um completely under the uh, under the bus and this ended up then sort of spiraling in Tom Foster receiving now that he didn't actually pick up the call as far as I believe, but late, well, uh, evening, sort of night time, ended up getting a call and a voice message being left on his mobile phone. Now, what Mike has said is Tom, um, and, I'll, and I'll show you then what, um, what happened uh, later on. So this is a screenshot of the post in question. Um, so again tom's having a bit of a you know a jab you know a bit a bit of a conversation with people and you can see you know eight and a half hours difference duncan thomas gets in there commenting on did you get a call tonight now i believe that comment was left at 11 o'clock half 11 um and what mike is saying what what i believe tom is saying is like this 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 is touching on harassment um and furthermore i believe that tom is no longer a basque member so it begs the question of well how did basque get their number now he used to i believe he used to previously be a uh, a member of basque but i believe there's a distinct difference between basque uk and basque northern ireland and details would have had to be passed between the organizations um which most likely violates a a whole plethora of GDPR laws and and data protection laws and all that, I'm not an expert. There might be some exemptions or some you know small print that, that allows Bass to do that, but they specifically phone this guy, and this is what Mike and I think what Tom has said to Mike specifically phone this guy to intimidate, 
So, you know, they've seen that somebody's going along, going around online and calling them out about being rollovers and, you know, showing their bellies to government and all that, rolling onto, you know, their backside to show their bellies to government. And, you know, Tom's going out and calling them out on it. And Bass don't like that. So they've obtained his, his personal number and tried to phone it. <coughs> Excuse me. Need, need more jungle juice. They've tried to phone him, you know, from what I understand, in the evening, late at night. And then Duncan Thomas going on there and having a bit of a jab. Now that's, you know, you, you, you read the language of that. You know, that's not a, oh, I'm sorry, we tried to reach you. Could you give us a call at your earliest convenience? That's a, did we get a call tonight? You're not willing to chat? That That's, that's harassment. That's bullying. You know, and this is a senior member of Basque. And he's... And, and they're trying to intimidate and trying to bully anybody that doesn't sort of sing their praises, doesn't really want to, um, let's say, repeat the Basque narrative. And I can completely believe what is going on. And, and again, I have limited information at this time, but you know, Mike has sent me all, all these screenshots. I, I don't think I have anything uh, else sort of... Um, relevant uh, maybe maybe apart from this so that comment as well was actually um deleted unfortunately um for for duncan uh mike screenshotted it so there, there is evidence of it and and now the memes are are getting seriously tasty um but i have experienced this myself and um you know it was a number of months ago i ended up making a a video about the the legal expenses insurance and the fact that Basque had dropped that to save a million pound because they needed to save a million pound and then suddenly this million pound fighting fund appeared out of nowhere and oh, I wonder where the money from that came from. And we all know that's so that they don't now have to protect all members with the legal expenses insurance. They're able to pick and choose which battles they want to fight and so far that's just been game. That's just been game shooting. That's just been Chris Packham. That's been Wild Justice. Again, a cause to fight, but it allows them to completely control where they're going to be putting that money and, and, and sort of gives them the power to decide which areas of shooting sports they want to uh, they want to protect and not necessarily be an all-encompassing sort of protective governing body, which we, we desperately, desperately need. And... I made out. I made this video. I was very critical of it. It didn't make a lot of sense. I called out. I th I think what I saw at the time a lot of bullshit. Um, and I ended up getting a a request for a chat on Zoom from um, Christopher Graphius, who was the communications director for for Basque. Um, and I'm sort of pleased that he only had the the free version of Zoom, which limited it to uh, 45 minutes, because unfortunately it was mostly 45 minutes of bullshit. And I. The first five minutes were very, very interesting, and and I do have it recorded. Um, you know, perhaps this might be a, a spark to sort of bring bring out that footage and discuss it further. But in the first five minutes, he was, I think, a little bit taken aback, and I very much got the impression that he was the um, the big bad wolf headmaster, and he was about to give a naughty school ch child a bit of a telling off. And I get the, the same feeling with, with this of, of Mike and, and Tom in this example. And the five, first five minutes were very interesting because I wasn't backing down and I wasn't, you know, yes sir, no sir, two bags full sir. Like, you know, you guys know me, I'm, I'm not exactly like that. And after that five minutes, I think he realised, oh shit, this, this isn't going to be me telling this guy to get in line and sing Basque, Basque's praises. Like, this this guy's, like, out for blood. Um, and I, I corrected him and brought him up on many, many different points. And there were multiple points where he lied, he misled, misinterpreted, you know, conf conflicted, um, conflicted himself in the same paragraphs of, of discussion um, that, that we were having. And Again, I think this is perhaps a, an unfortunate common tactic of Basque, which if it, if anybody's kicking up a stink, if anybody's dares to speak out um, against Basque, they give you a little phone call and, and tell you to be to to get back in line. Well, unfortunately for them, it didn't work for me, and and again, unfortunately for them, I don't think it's going to work with Tom and Mike. So we will have to see where that one goes. Um, and 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 yeah. I, I, the, the the funny thing is, is before before all of this unfolding this evening, 
um i, I was actually going to sing a lot of basque praises and, and i still do it they are they are learning they are actually doing a very good job on social media at the moment they're doing live streams they're putting videos out they're doing podcasts they're posting regularly maybe again a little bit more biased towards the game side of things rather than the shooting sports side of things but they they are i i would say over the the last 12 months there has been a considerable effort and and sort of uptake in basque social media um and and i think they are now doing a, a very good job but unfortunately when they're going around and doing these sort of bully boy techniques it doesn't paint them in a very good light uh, in a very good light and again i have to commend duncan thomas on a lot of the stuff that he has done on social media how active he is how vocal he is and he's not willing he's not um you know he's he's prepared to get into a tango with somebody if he wants to unfortunately and and it's not the first time i've seen it getting in a tango with fellow shooters is maybe not as productive as getting in a tango with the antis um so maybe if that was just a little bit you know just take the criticism basque on the chin understand that you're not perfect understand that you're not the be all and end all of of shooting sports in the uk you're not the the outright authority and the outright voice of um of shooters in in the uk and sometimes you have to take it on the chin that's people don't like what you're doing they're going to be critical of it and unfortunately when you have a track record of rolling over on certain issues people are going to call you out on it you know so so take it on the chin maybe learn on it or or, or don't but take it on the chin move on and just carry on harassing people like that i don't think really um really achieves much unless they are of course everybody's favorite mike Lindsay and uh Yes, this this was a beautiful Christmas present given to me, Mike Lindsay, Mike Yardley. Sorry, sorry, Mike Lindsay, uh, Mike Mike Yardley. Um, that that's definitely somebody worth spending your time tangoing with it because it because it's absolutely fucking hilarious. Um, anyway, what's what's uh, Mike Yardley up to these days? Yes, I do have a DVD. That's genuinely a DVD of uh, of Mike Yardley, um, given to me very kindly by a friend for uh, for Christmas or um or birthday. Um, so Simon saying, Kyle, thank you, Kyle. Take it on the chin. Um, just better hope your aim's good. Um, so Simon saying, baffle them with bullshit. That's what most companies do because they don't think we know what we're talking about absolutely and and unfortunately this is a vibe that i get a lot from basque which is all well, what do you know we're basque we're we're you know almighty we're all all powerful why do we need to listen to their members and and this was just some of the bullshit that i got from christopher gratheus which is well we regularly consult our members and we had you know extensively polled and surveyed our members to whether or not they needed this legal expenses insurance and i'm like uh, okay well <clears throat> at this point in time i was a basque member i hadn't been asked i said so so straight away that's bullshit or we, will we poll a certain percentage of our members okay is that the percentage of members that don't have email you know because that's going to be a very you know and i think it's 20 percent of basque members members don't have email that's their justification for keeping the basque ma magazine going because 20 percent can't get online anyway um and and it was it was just obviously horseshit until and and to this day no previous or current bass member has been able to say to me oh yes i was asked whether i wanted to lose the um legal expenses insurance N it didn't happen it was just more lies and lies and lies and and unfortunately that's that's what bass seems to do but let's let's get away from bass let's um again in terms of the game side in terms of the you know chris packham and wild justice i think they do a fantastic job for you know an older organization they are adapting finally to social media and i think doing a very good job of it i just think that there's maybe a few more fine tweaks to the organization that could be could be done uh conrad uh, is the gsg 1911 lbp worth it you never did a full review um on it like you said though i can guess why yeah that's that's because the police took it off me um so i would have quite happily have done a, a review on it but to be fair i could probably 
I could probably do like a um like I've sh I've shot a number of them since I've even shot a, a Mark One um and a couple of Mark Two since so um a couple of different Mark Twos like heavily modified ones standard ones so I know my way around it. Uh, the general consensus is pay the hundred quid more and go and get the the Walther Colt 1911. Um, so you know Walther bought out alongside um, alongside their PPQ 22 LBP. The, there's also a 1911 Colt uh, copy made by by Walther. Uh, overall, the the Walther version of the of the 1911 is uh, a lot higher quality the parts are a lot more robust and certainly connor's who's seen the insides of many different guns um clothed and and you know unclothed um depends what night of the week it is they uh he highly recommends the walther over the 1911 now the uh, sorry the the gsg the gsg has i think an unfair rap now the mark ones that were actually made i believe it was by the the tunnel um, the tunnel rangers down in in Dorset, they were sort of Frankenstein guns. They had got various bits from here and there and assembled them down at the tunnel, um, and and unfortunately they just weren't that reliable. They did have issues, and the Mark ones you certainly want to steer, steer clear of. The Mark twos, those, which is what I had, um, the so the the videos or the one or two videos on it, I had the Mark two. That ran for the time that I had it, and I, and I probably only put maybe like 500 rounds through it. Ran out of the box really, really well. I was using CCI Mini Mag with it, you know, which again is my go to test ammo, um, and it was absolutely fine. And a lot of them that I've seen have run absolutely great. And because it's a 1911 platform, there's, there's loads of people making upgrade kits for them, there's you can get more performance out of them. Um, and I remember going down to uh, Seven Side Rangers and somebody. Um, was it was a guy called Rich Morgan, um, who who I see a lot at a lot of the shows. I've spent a lot of time um, shooting with. Um, he has a fully tricked out uh, Mark II GSG nineteen eleven. He was shooting, I think it was a six inch plate at a hundred yards standing consistently, and it was like you know bang ting bang ting bang ting, and it was just incredible to watch. Now that had actually been uh, fully pimped by uh nicholas holm um of of magic nine i think the company is so it had all these accurizing kits and it, it was it was almost like a new gun uh, after he'd had it but shooting standard uh standing 100 yards at six inch plate with what is a three four hundred pound gun on the on the base of it um that's pretty impressive impressive you can't you can't um, really argue with that. So, so yes, I, you know, the Mark II GSG 1911, I don't think you can go wrong with. But after um, having some time with the the Walther Colt, I would go with the um, uh, I would go with the Colt. Uh, caliber Caliber's Gen 2 CIPP 22 will be the LBP of 2021. Oh. You got you got you got to send me some sneak peek photos, David. You got to keep me you got to keep me teased because that's 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 not quite enough teasing. Um, because now I want to I now I want to know more. Um, <laughs> and I promise I won't show them on stream. Um, and actually talking of um talking of caliber, that's a nice segue. It was going to be uh one of the points this discussed this evening. Let's um. Let's go and check that out now. Um, I've got to find it first. Uh, so Caliber Innovations, this has been this has been a gun that's been around. Well, it's it's sort of been out there and sort of announced, and people have been aware of it for a while. Um, but like all things, there, there's loads of testing, loads of stuff that um, is always left to do. But I believe the first versions of the straight pull Siscar uh, Nine um, is going to be available very very soon. So. Um, Let's go and have a look at it. So obviously we know that with the offensive weapons bill, Mars and lever release action guns uh, are going to be banned. I think, and again, this is another point to to talk about later in the stream. Um, but you know, they're they're being handed in. Compensation is being uh, is being issued for them, um, and you know, it's a perfect sort of market opportunity to bring out a nine millimeter straight pull AR. 
Um, so this is some footage that's available on the um, on YouTube. So ambidextrous Glock magazines, AR15 platform. So it's a it's a nine millimeter straight pull. So you know if if you're currently handing in your lever release or Mars action, uh, and you you're you're being paid the compensation and you're looking for something to uh, to fill that slot, then go and check out Caliber Innovations. They they've got a, a nine mil replacement sort of straight away for you. Um, oh look, it's the stream. Uh, we, we, we could have some streamception that sounds that sounds naughty uh anyway um so so yeah actually on on the note of the offensive weapons bill we have um less than two weeks now so no sorry not the offensive weapons bill something completely different uh seg <laughs> segue on to there's so many bloody bills and consultations going on i sort of lose where I, where i'm at um the firearm safety consultations. This is the one regarding 50 cals, air rifle, ammunition components, and miniature rifle ranges. Um, we now have less than two weeks to get your submissions in. So go and find it. I will um, I'll bring it up on the uh, screen now, firearm safety consultation. It is imperative that as many, um, many people as possible submit submissions uh, to this uh, consultation. So the consultation closes at um, midnight on the 16th of February. So yes, less than two weeks to go. Here is the link. If you haven't submitted, go and do it. There are some really good guidance now, finally, from Basque. Um, a couple of their answers sort of make you scratch your head, but um, never mind. Uh, the uh, 50 cal society so they're available it's the uh, fcsa uh, the 50 cal shooting association not society or is it social you know what i'm saying they're on facebook they did a post recently where again they gave guidance of of what to say for those answers and how to interpret interpret those questions it is imperative that as many people go and fill out that consultation as possible to represent shooters in as big a numbers as possible to so that the government realizes well hang on a minute when this isn't just a few people we're gonna we're gonna really affect a, a load of people here whether or not it makes a difference we don't know but it's you know there's no point sat here moaning when there's something to that we can do and not go and do it will caliber do an underleaver nine millimeter um next um that would be interesting i mean obviously uh we, we we talked about it last week or the week before southern gun company they are releasing a an underlever ar 9 mil or have released one which is absolutely incredible um so again another option if if anybody's had to hand in their their guns from the offensive weapons bill um again so many bloody bills and consultations I just I, I lose track um right so who uh any uh people talking about the butt marks uh if you didn't know the butt mark was the first long barrel pistol created by literally the the godfather of long barrel pistols mr alan westlake it was it was alan westlake that got the the butt mark rifle cut it down put the rod on and turn and created the first long barrel pistol and there's there's actually a, an interview um online about him uh, and he's talking about how it all started and you know what a guy uh, it really was and, and I don't think he says these words exactly but the general gist of why he did it was to stick two fingers up at the police you know he was like this is madness why are you taking away our you know again he's a he's a handgun specialist right his whole industry completely destroyed overnight by the handgun uh, handgun ban you can understand why he was maybe a little bit pissed off at the the police and government at the time so to sort of get his own back he was like right so what are the rules what are the parameters okay if i do this and i make it like that long barrel pistol um so alan westlake was the first one to make a long barrel pistol and ever since that um you know he he sparked what we have today i mean when i first got into shooting um almost coming on for like 10 years ago now there was the mark one gsg the k22 and the buck mark um and the low mill rangers um 
nine uh, nineteen eleven, but they were like two two and a half thousand pound. Um, so really, like not not a choice at all. You look today at the long barrel pistol market, and you know you can still buy a butt mark. You can still get the K twenty twos. You've got the Mark two GSGs. You've got the GSG Firefly. You've got the Walther PPQ. The Walther nineteen eleven Colt. You've got the uh, Caliber Innovations. Uh, Glock, the, the the Glock, not a Glock, uh, the CIP 22. There was, of course, the um, the Icon Arms IP 226. Unfortunately, um, unfortunately, that that that, really, that didn't really take off the ground. But there are some floating about. Um, what else am I forgetting? Uh, well, we've now got potentially two CZ Shadow uh, replicas. You've got the one from Cotswold Classic Arms and the one from Shield. They're going to be hitting the market. Um, any other LBPs? I think that's about it. Maybe. Um, of course, my favourite, as you probably all know, is the uh, the Walther PPQ. Absolutely love that. I think it's in terms of the price, reliability, shootability. Um, it's it's absolutely uh, absolutely awesome. So yeah. So you know, ten years ago there was three. Well, of course, you can still potentially count the low mill ranger. So that's eleven. Um, so yeah, you know, ten years ago there was three, maybe four long barrel pistols available, and now we've got eleven plus, you know, like the likes of the Chiapa. Um, but yeah, am, am I living leaving off any long barrel pistols? Don't I don't think I am. Three CZs, just saying. Well, that that's a bit of a that's a bit of a hint. So twelve. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, Sergeant Holding, can you do a Scotland air gun certificate? Uh, what you want me to like write one out for you? It, it won't it won't be any, be any good. I I'm assuming you mean um, a video, um, so I will uh, make a note of that. To be to be honest, again, I'm not an expert on Scottish air gun laws. This is why it, I haven't done one because I, I think there are people that are far more experienced and knowledgeable on it. But I can do some um, some research on it. Um, and we can see what I can do, whether or not it will be any good and, and accurate. I don't know, but we can we can certainly give it a try. Let's uh, gun. So I, I guess you talk about you, you want to know about what you need to do, the processes. Uh, applicate. So I do like an application sort of video. Did anybody watch the? Um, so that was the video that went out this week, I believe it was. Um, the filling out the no I mean a vid yeah to to you you want you you me to you, you want me to send you a video you've definitely got to pay for that that's definitely that's the premium English shooting service right there um, you know I'll do it by the minute you can you can leave when you're done um, yes yeah and I'll do I'll do some I'll do some research on it and I'll, I'll do that video but did anyone um did any of you guys watch the uh, certificate application video? I hope it's hope. I hope it's useful. I hope people found it um, sort of a bit of an insight. Obviously, going through that process myself recently, um, I was fairly hot on it, so it sort of coincided with with me making that that video. No, you don't want a video with me of me. I'll make it worth your while. I promise. Only guns, only shooting. <laughs> only guns. Um, if that if. If that URL is not taken, it's going to be a race now, isn't it? Um, I'm buying it. That's definitely a URL worth having. Only guns. Well, .com isn't available, but .onlyguns.co.uk is available. Um, am I logged in to my account? It's 99p. So just just buying domains. Continue with purchase. If any of you bastards beat me to it, I will not be happy. Total one pound nineteen. Here we go. Registrant type. I'm going to. Oh, I can't be. Can't be asked to go through all of that. Well, no, it's eleven ninety nine. Why? It was like one pound nineteen a minute ago. Oh, I can't be asked for one pound nineteen. I would have bought it, but but only one. 
it always does this on one two three reg anyway only only guns.co.uk is available for any of you demented uh lot to to go in um to go and buy it and do funky things with um cheesecake is there no link to the extra gp form on the application um no on the on the actual application it's it's very separate which i know can make it a little bit annoying uh so this is exactly what i fell foul of is i went straight into the application did the application form and then got a notification saying you have 24 hours to return us your submitted uh gp application form or your gp form well yeah that's not going to happen so it's a completely different form there is a link to it uh, on the on Hampshire's website you can go and find it uh, obviously you then print it off go and hand it in to your GP and, and they'll be able to do it there'll be a small fee uh, but whilst you're actually doing the application itself there there's no no form or GP form once you've submitted the application it will give you a link to go and get it bye bye but if you're in Thames or you're in Hampshire it's too late because you have 24 hours to get it to them unless your gp is absolutely amazing and you can literally walk in and them do it um then then i don't know uh is there an icon arms p226 for sale anywhere i i see them occasionally pop up on gun trader and gunstar like but as far as i know there was there was only 10 to 20 of them ever made uh, I, and I know very early on there were issues with them. Uh, I know some people ended up uh, returning them. Some were fixed. So, you know, that you could be looking at only 10, 10 or 15 of them in existence in the country. So they are very, very rare. But I have seen them come up. My recommendation is buy one. If you If you see one there, buy it. Because there are a number of people that would give their, their left arm um, to have one. Like, you, you could probably buy it put it straight up on gun gun trader for another 200 quid someone will eventually buy it because you know it's it's a sig 226 you know okay the um the uh the firefly the gsg firefly which is a direct copy of the mosquito uh sig mosquito um it's uses the it's it uses the same tooling again for for those of you that don't know i think i touched on this in the review video of the um did i do a review of the firefly yes yes i did um it's basically sig went to gsg and said we want you to make the mosquito but to our standards and gsg did so it was it was branded sig it was branded the mosquito and then sig were like nah probably because it was being made by gsg but they sort of gave it up but gsg were like well we've got all the tooling can we just make a a gsg mosquito and i think sig were like yeah just don't put sig, sig or mosquito on it call it what you want and therefore we got the um you know gsg firefly you know mosquito firefly sort of very similar well the mosquito slash firefly are um a scaled down version of the 226 so the closest thing other than the icon arms 226 is the um gsg firefly but there is nothing on you know in terms of long barrel pistol uk legal in 22 nothing other than those for a, a 226 so you know that the 226 is a popular gun most people want one in, in terms of their collection you've got to be you know you just got to keep looking at gun trader looking at gunstar and um, to snap one up need a bit of a boost now Callum, please make an only guns. Someone buy me the domain. Oh, I'm I'm not paying. One pound nineteen I'd pay. Eleven pound well, it's fourteen fourteen thirty nine including VAT. But you go on there and it goes if one of you bought this already, I will not be happy. Because it's just gonna be it should just be a photo of Connors. Um well, it's still available. It says first year, 99, only offers for the first year and only for new customers. Uh, okay, it's because I'm not a new customer. That's fine. Anyway, it's available. If someone wants to buy it, I'll do something funky with it. Onlyguns.ukshooting.org coming soon. Oh, dear. Um, 
Tika T3 Take 1 or a Ruger uh, RPR for a first target rifle. Um, why not a 700? Like the 700 is is pretty. It's not. It's nothing special, but they're well tested. There's loads of mods for them. There's loads of upgrades you can get for them. Um, I would consider still looking at a Remington 700. Um, personally, if it was money, no object, I'd probably go for the Tika T3 Tac A1. Um, Tika overall are just a little bit higher quality than Ruger, in my opinion. I think the Tac A1 is a more it certainly gives you um, as a rifle, as a gun, as a whole. It's, it makes a bigger impression. It looks something a little bit more special. It looks a little little cooler. The the I know that the um, uh, the Ruger Precisions are very very popular. And I've heard some people having issues with them. They're a, they're great for the price point. But I think what you would end up doing if if you were to buy a, a an RPR or say a 700, you would end up doing everything to it, which ended up making it like a Tac A1. So it just depends, I think, on budget. I, th I think the Tac A1 is slightly more expensive than the RPR from um, from memory, but I might be wrong with that. Daniel Smerald, video anytime soon. What, just in general or about anything? I mean, I, I tend to, you know, as a YouTube channel, I tend to make videos fairly regularly, Daniel. It's sort of the whole point. Um, range, a range video anytime soon. Um, well, yeah, if, if, if we can meet up and, you know, under obviously COVID rules and all that, can meet up and do something, I'd be up for a range video soon. Absolutely. Um, Callum answered Dan, for God's sake, he's is waiting for his bro date. <laughs> yes, Dan, you are trying too hard. That's that's, that's just who you are. Um, but yeah, as soon as soon as we can, we we have a little date. We we'll go for a little go for a little pew pew. Um, oh, we had a quick drop in from Arius. No real loss. Uh, Callum, I've been told gun owners in Northern Ireland are not allowed to collect their firearms from their gun stores. I wouldn't know. I'm not over in Northern Ireland. I hadn't heard anything. Um, well, we, and actually, as uh, as Colin makes a very good point, we can't collect our guns from stores uh, here either. So it's only essential travel. Now, if you're only in shooting for uh, as a hobby, for a sport, sport is not essential at the moment, although they are doing like premiership and six nations and, and all that but anyway so sport is is not essential uh, at the at the moment in terms of uh, you know your average day citizen so to go to your gun shop to travel to your gun shop to pick up a gun for a hobby that you're not supposed to be doing at the moment isn't deemed essential unfortunately now of course if you're a a gamekeeper if you're a professional stalker professional hunter you've got you know, permission where a farmer needs you to be going out and pest controlling and there is a genuine requirement or a genuine need, then we will, well, then the shops are justified in serving you. Um, you're justified in going out as long as you have a valid reason, as long as it can be deemed essential. So, of course, Northern Ireland and the UK at the moment, non-essential travel. So, you know, we, you just have to be able to justify it. Um, but it's... Uh, it's up to you at the, at the end of the day only you can decide where whether it's essential because at the end of the day it will only be you that gets absolutely shafted if you get pulled over not forgetting that there were fac holders that lost licenses for traveling under the previous lockdown um uh, the first lockdown so you know be careful about it don't take the piss only go out if you're um if it's absolutely necessary I thought Silverstone Shooting Set Shooting Club was open. Um, yeah, let let's just say that John hasn't been particularly good at following the rules through uh, through COVID. Um, there's a number of photos and, and videos that went out during. Um, it, it wasn't necessarily under the lockdown period, but there was definitely a distinct lack of social distancing um, and any sort of COVID um, 
restrictions being sort of adhered to. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if if on the sort of the down low he's he's letting people um, shoot there. But of course, you know you you are allowed to go and shoot on your own. Going to a shooting club at the moment isn't um, uh, it's not essential. So again, you you can go outside for your your daily exercise. So going rough shooting if you've got a private range that you can go on. You're allowed to, I think, meet up with one other person outside of your support bubble. Um, but you, again, just bear in mind that as a firearms certificate holder, if you get caught and you can't, um, you can't justify it, you're going to get yourself in a lot of trouble and most likely lose your your certificates. Uh, Parallel Knight, thank you uh, very much. Much appreciated for that. Um, you want to start shooting uh, World War Two slash one. Uh, bolt lever, bolt lever shot rifle, lever. So you, bolt, bolt, bolt action rifles. Um, in the UK, Cheshire, is it worth it, or should I just do it whatever I can to move, um, to the uh to the American uh, live the American dream. Um. <laughs> I mean. If you're young, if you're single, if you've got absolutely no commitment and firearms are like the biggest thing in your life and, and owning those those guns and starting a collection is like an absolute must for you, um, then go yeah, go to America. If if you want to surround your whole life around guns, going to America isn't a bad shout. Now, I, I have this conversation all the time, either through comments on the channel even on here through messengers where people go well why don't why don't i just move to the states because i've sort of made everything around me um in, in terms of my hobby in terms of my my job in terms of my life um around shooting why don't i go to the states it's because i have other commitments and you know i have friends believe it or not um i've got family i've got you know a fiance i've got you know we've got businesses that you know have started and they need to be you know they need to be run um so so it's it's not you know that it's not just as simple as you know just upping sticks and going to america you need to get a green card you need, you know there's many ways you can do that but it's not always a, a guarantee uh, or it's certainly very expensive if you want to guarantee it um but for the good news if, if for for bolt action rifles uh absolutely no problem collecting them within the uk you actually shouldn't find yourself restricted in any bolt action rifle you'd want you would want to collect from world war one or world war two um so you know that's and, and collecting is actually a, a very it's a fairly straightforward thing and fairly uh there's less there can be less restrictions and it can be easier in some ways to go down the collecting route rather than a club route or rather than say a uh you know a hunting route because with collecting you don't need to go and shoot them you don't need to necessarily have a like a justified reason for every gun because your justified reason is i'm a collector and i want my collection to be as vast and as detailed in terms of all the different variants as possible so you know once you have a collection it's very very hard for you to ever have your FAC say taken away in terms of using the guns or in terms of justification because you might just keep them sat there in the safe it does it, there's no stipulation that you have to get them out a minimum time every year to have a little ogle at them you could just be collecting them to know that they are sat there in the um in the safes and of course the the great thing about the UK with with bolt action rifles being more completely unrestricted in terms of the overall length as long as the barrels are uh 12 12 inches uh, long and the overall length is over 24 inches you can own it um so i mean um dan smerald has a replica delisle many many people have a have an enfield of some variety here in the uk i had a, a mosin Megant uh, for quite a long time i do miss that gun um and uh, one of the best um if if you're interested in getting into it it's uh let me find this because this I, i've heard mixed reports of this place but i've been there um a few times uh, and the guy is you know he was absolutely brilliant to me um but this this place specializes in 
sort of World War One, World War Two uh, firearms. So I'm going to put this link um, in the description for you. Um, it would be worth dropping this guy, um, dropping this guy a message. So uh, I know the Discord guys are going to wet themselves because this came. Um, I believe this got this place got posted the other day in the Discord, and let's just say there's some modified rifles on there that uh, that people didn't necessarily agree with, um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, going in terms of I believe what this person said when I went and visited there was that they were the only place in the UK with all of the uh, I think with enough with with every unused component of an Enfield to make up effectively a brand new Enfield from original parts if that makes any sense um, so but yeah um, to be honest Parallel Night again yep going to America would be great but actually for World War 1 World War 2 bolt action guns you can do that in the UK absolutely no problem why do I have to see the 6.5 <laughs> let me bring it up because um, this was actually pretty um, pretty funny so I'll bring it up on this what why I didn't do this a minute ago oh it's because the chat's over there so if I want to show you something I've got to if I want to link something I've got to use that PC and if, if I want to show you something I've got to use this one um, so here we go this is this is the link for any of you that were too lazy to uh, click on it or oh, we can get we can get really sexy with the voice right now <laughs> um, let's get that on um, so here we go C CNG um, or CG firearms let's go to rifles and I believe it's gonna pop up any second there was um, here we go I believe uh, let me know I might be wrong on this uh, Captain Crack but I believe it was uh, it was this this gun here. Um, so yep, yeah, you're seeing that right. That's a 6.5 Creedmoor Enfield sniper rifle, um, and I believe there's a bit more, bit more about it. Custom built Enfield in 6.5 Creedmoor. Interesting project was commissioned by a customer. Um, so yeah, that's that's a thing. Uh, 6.5 uh, sniper rifle Enfield right there. I can I can hear the vomit from that from from here, uh, so that's maybe enough on that. But that's well actually let's not not more of the six point five. But for those of you that didn't follow the link, um, this uh, oh no it's Basque approved. Run away! Basque is monitoring the situation. Um, you can see the sort of guns that they're doing. You know all sorts of historical rifles, some very interesting. The, these guys were also section five. I don't know if they. Uh, advertise their section 5 stuff oh let's be a bit naughty shall we oh oh here we go who's your daddy Bren go oh someone get me a tissue yeah there's let's let's just say he has some interesting guns um that's all of the sec section 5 I mean when I went there he was pulling out um not not the best phrase to leave it on pulling pulling out um he was uh pulling out uh, it was a a stubby um like over barrel charging pump action shotgun for for breaching he was pulling out uh beretta 92 fs he had an uzi like a boxed original uzi it was absolutely incredible um you know like this li it looked like a toy box like look literally a toy box and he pulled it open genuine uzi in the original packaging um pardon me so yeah absolutely incredible worth a visit visit certainly if you're interested in your historical oh pardon me um your historical rifles need some more jungle juice um so yeah yeah get in contact with them i, I believe they're sort of a very big expert when it comes to to enfields and all things like that um we've got uh an on and on german here should i get a chinese ak for 540 euros or save my money for a 1700 pound or 1700 euro ar as your first guns calibers are 762 by um 
39 and 22 respectively. Oh God, what's what's Kyle said? Pulling out a stubby. Well, thank you, Kyle, for the um, for the the generosity. Um, it's going to take a little bit more than five pounds to pull out my stubby, if I'm going to be completely honest. Uh, it is worth it, but it's it's a pricey pricey display. Um, should I get a Chinese? Um, well, it depends what sort of shooting you want. I mean, you can have a lot of fun with an AK. You can get a lot of cheap ammunition for it and have loads of fun. If you're going to get into sort of, and, and to be fair, although I'm about to say serious competition, there were people out at the Rifle World shoot shooting with AK variant guns. Um, but if you want to get into, you know, I'd, I'd say, you know, com proper competitive shooting and shooting in open, so on and so forth, a 223 AR, it's a brilliant base gun. You can you can use it for a variety of things. You can go hunting. You can go, um, you know, sport shooting with it. You can. I don't know what necessarily the self defense laws with firearms are in Germany, but of course, an AR fifteen is is a great self defense tool as well. Um, for loads of uses, very versatile gun. The AR fifteen. You can get a lot of uses out of it. I'm an AR guy, but I would happily, you know, for five. I mean, for 540 euro, why don't you just get both? Like, you know, just, just well, maybe get a slightly cheaper AR and get the AK as well. You know, you got two hands. God gave you two hands for a good reason. AK and AR in each one. Perfect harmony. It's like yin and yang. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just seeing all your comments about the uh, 6.5 Enfield. Somewhere there is a group of 6.5 owner, uh, owners furiously masturbating onto a biscuit. That's all I'm saying. Thanks, the crit, the kids are crying now. Yep. Um, are deactivated guns legal in the UK? Yes, um, if no one's uh, explained yet. There are very stringent guidelines and rules when it comes to uh, to deacts. So if, if you're currently in possession of a deac, uh, it's it's fine. It can be under the old rules, but if you buy one today, it has to be up to the current standards. Basically, uh, like there's certain requirements in terms of the blocking and drilling of the barrel, and there can't be any moving parts, which is a real shame because people that have DX they want to uh, appreciate the rifles or or the guns, and they want to be able to rack the slide and play around with the magazine and use the slide catch and and feel what the gun would be like as much as possible with obviously without any ammunition. So anybody with old uh, with, with old uh, DX, you can still do that, but new ones are like completely welded shut. And it uh, unfortunately, I think removes a lot of the fun um, out of, of owning, um, uh, owning a DX. But yeah, you don't need a license for them. If you buy a new one, it just has to be done. It has to be effectively proofed by the proofing house to say that it is done to today's standards of uh, of deactivation uh, Aaron T how easy is it to get into full ball at KFC and getting an FAC that way um, well you're in the perfect place because David is a committee member and one of the founding members of Kentucky Firearms Club uh, I can say that in, in my experience of clubs and hearing a lot of other people's experiences of, of clubs, KFC is certainly one of the quickest and easiest gateways into the uh, into the sport. I mean, you know, they, they get you with a little the, with the soft stuff and before you know it, you're you're selling your own mother for the hard stuff. It's the whole premise of KFC was I think born out of frustration of the old boy fuddy duddy clubs. Oh no, you can't have any fun and oh you can't possibly shoot more than a round a minute. Who would ever want to do that? And KFC were like, screw all of this. It doesn't need to be like this. We can we we can, you know, make it easy, accessible for people, welcoming for people. And if you join KFC, if you go on their website, um I think it's K uh, Kentucky Firearms Club org uh, and get in contact with them and and get signed up technically as soon as you remember the next time that they're shooting full ball down at bisley or or any other ranges that they shoot at you can turn up and shoot so you know 
really uh here we go david's um unfortunately got stuck in the spam filter but aaron t that's the the email um so get in contact with kfc like if you um yeah ba basically if, if 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 covid wasn't a thing right now kfc do at least two shoots a month and and nra and busily range booking permitting they'd be doing one a week quite happily so you could join the club become a member and literally like the next day be going on one of their one of their shoots and, and shooting so you know it's um it's, it's easy they make it simple they make it easy they make it straightforward it's 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 cheap so you know i think membership now is it's still only like 50 quid so just just join and do it when you talk about KFC, it just makes me go. I know, but we can't talk. We can't have any intrinsic link between Kentucky Fried Chicken and Kentucky Firearms Club because you will receive a cease and desist letter. I can assure you, I have one. I've got the T-shirt. Burnt it as well. Um, only if you add a zombie knife to the clip. Oh no, David! Don't be talking about that. You're going to get people put in prison. You can't own a zombie knife. Can you use your SGC or FAC as a self-defense tool if someone is trying to kill you or harm you? Um, I don't think actually using the certificate itself would be advisable in a self-defense situation. I mean, they are quite high quality certificates, but there's not really an, enough mass behind them. I don't think they're going to act well as a shield, if I'm going to be completely honest. They are just sort of reinforced paper. Um, obviously, what they allow you to own um, is, is maybe a different matter. Of, of course, I'm being I'm being a tool. I understand what you mean. I'm just, that's not what you said. The way you said it was that you're going to use your certificate. I wish I had a certificate. Um, oh, this, why, why, does, why do people constantly try and get me onto this? bloody topic um right let, let's talk factually i'm going to give an absolutely no opinion i know brace yourself guys this doesn't happen very often the, the law in the uk as it stands you are not allowed to own uh, under a firearm certificate or a shotgun certificate you are not allowed to own a firearm for self-defense if you say to your feo or the police that you want a firearm certificate or a shotgun certificate for self-defense purposes you will never have a firearm or shotgun certificate it won't happen if you've got one and you tell them it you won't have it much longer that's for sure however it is not illegal to use any any lawfully possessed item for the purposes of self-defense and i'm not talking just about guns so if you have a taser or you have a baton or you have a zombie knife whatever the fuck they are um that is an illegal they, they are section five they are effectively any other weapon so being in possession of one of those anyway and and you know unless you are section five but let's assume you're not being in possession of those is illegal in the first place and whilst in certain circumstances defending yourself with one wouldn't necessarily be illegal you would then be prosecuted for having something you were not lawfully in possession of however if you are a firearm or shotgun certificate and you are lawfully in possession of a firearm and a shotgun and in the worst case scenario you ended up using your lawfully held fire sporting or hunting firearms in a self-defense situation that in itself is not against the law and is permissible so there's been a number of cases uh where this um this is, has stood true there was a a couple it was a farming couple um the farmer the, the husband grabbed his shotgun uh confronted a guy in his kitchen the guy went for him with a knife he shot him um i i, I know there was two burglars i i can't i know one certainly got seriously fucked up i don't i can't remember if, if any of them died um but they they were initially arrested um and they they were f let go with no further action i believe his, his his shotgun and firearms were returned to him um there was a case of um 
well the the most famous one of course is is tony martin which is not a very good uh it's really not a good example and a lot of people go they use that example to say oh see look you can't use guns for self-defense in the uk um that's because he wasn't in lawful possession of that shotgun he was um you know i think he'd either been refused or had already had certificates revoked but he didn't have a certificate and he was in possession of a shotgun he was in possession of an illegal gun and then you know people would like to debate the actual circumstances of how he he killed um that guy but at the end of the day he did it with an illegal firearm so whether or not he was he was justified in you know in killing someone is one question but regardless of what you think he was in possession of a legal firearm so it's not the best case and it, and it certainly doesn't prove that you you can't use guns for self-defense um but there we go i think that everything i've said is is completely factual there's no opinion in there um that is how it is i am not in any way shape or form saying for anyone to go and get a firearm or shotgun certificate for that purpose you need a justified good reason for having an fac and having an SGC and self-defense is simply not one of them. And and that's just the crux of it. Whether you like it or not, that's what it is. Let's move away from self-defense, please. <laughs> yeah, Daniel, no, stop. You know. Oh no. Oh no, Oliver, you haven't. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh. Oh, I love you. Oh, marry me, Oliver. Let's let's share this together, shall we? Um, let's bring up. Uh, <laughs> uh, you absolutely, you absolute beauty. Uh, please, no one's. I I want to be the one that sends this to him if he's not already seen it. Please don't send this to Connors. So here we go, guys. Um, so this is. Uh, can you see can you see the URL? Onlyguns.co.uk. There we go. How absolutely amazing is that? Oh I'm gonna I'm gonna have to send it to him. I'm gonna have to send it to him now. You absolute beauty. Connors is gonna absolutely love that. Anyway, let's let's um let's get back. You um you absolutely I bet the Discord is losing their shit right now. Oh he's seen it. He's seen it. <laughs> it wasn't me! It wasn't me. We might we might having uh, an incoming angry Connors. <laughs> uh, Parallel night. Thank you very much once again. Um, possible change, UK gun law to being like the Second Amendment. It's it's not going to happen. Um, very very different. Um, very very different cultures. You, you know, America was built on the the right. You know, was built on the Second Amendment pretty much. Um, we just don't have that culture here with, with firearms. I don't think we're ever going to see it. We've seen com we've seen countries like um, Czech Republic bring in a Second Amendment. In in the UK, it's just we have a very different relationship with with firearms. Uh, that's it. That's true. Hello, Holly. Thanks for thanks for joining, Holly. Um, you should definitely you should definitely go and check out this uh, this website. Um, Holly, go and go and click on that link. Thanks for joining. She did say she would um, she would potentially pop in. You're a little late. You're a little late. I was expecting you earlier. You know, don't you don't you don't you love me? <laughs> oh no! Everyone, run, run away! <laughs> Maglode is here. Oh dear. Um, yeah, Parallel Night, there's been, you know, lots of people have tried. Y you, <laughs> I promise you, Holly, it's not, it's like, click on it. It's nothing, 
it's not what you th it, well it might be exactly what you think but it's it's nothing bad trust me it's safe for work just about i feel so betrayed why do you feel so betrayed what is it you can click on it just click on it holly trust me we all have Oh, that's it. Evening Connors seems you're getting more famous by the second year. Yeah, if you haven't already noticed, he, he Connors is um is, is gracing our presence everywhere this evening. <laughs> eBay full wedding kits, fifty quid. Uh, David, I I like my testicles. Please please no, please no. Um, it's not not gonna happen. It won't click on my phone. Okay, well, I'll message it to you, shall I? Don't mind me, just having a few... Uh... Just having a few private conversations. Um, I did see an uptick of people joining the stream. Obviously, they've, um, they've, they've sussed us out and, uh, and they've, they've quickly left. Uh, so, you know, probably for the best for them. It wasn't Ollie, it was... It was me. <laughs> he, he wants the credit. He wants the credit. Oh, it's just brilliant. I'm going to probably have that as like my uh, my home screen. Uh, anyway, back on to... Uh, lo lo lost myself for a bit. Um, oh, yeah. Actually, perfect talking of the, the Discord. So for anyone not convinced yet to, to go and head on to the Discord, Ol Oliver did put... A, uh, a link above to the discord um oh holly approves we've got the the seal of approval from holly <laughs> so um yeah that's that's definitely gonna have to be my home screen from now on so the discord i've just sent the link um for those of you not au fait with discord but maybe a little bit more au fait with reddit um the uh, uk shooting discord um now has a uh, a reddit page and i'm just finding the link i know if someone's probably going to beat me uh to it here we go it's, i'm going to send you a link so if you're on reddit and you want a place to go and talk about uh guns uh and you don't fancy say uh the discord there is the reddit link so you know another pocket of a of, of an online community to go and talk about guns and get information go and post anything in there people will try and help um but yeah the, so that, that was one of the points um of course we we need a a pray for pappy uh update um it's all gone down here at this point i it, literally a perpetual train wreck in motion um he has now moved in with this mystery woman yes the mother has already tried staying there um, but there have been reports of a blanket, and what's happening under said blanket, I am I am unaware. Uh, but certain certain things have been uh, have been discussed as far as we're aware, and we're monitoring the situation. Basque is observing, and we will see if uh, if Pappy makes it through the week. Uh, parallel night please do it is it does take a little bit of getting used to it took me um a day or so to really understand what it was um and and now i bet the guys wish i had never joined uh <coughs> but it's great it's like a, an instant forum there's people on it all the time if you've got any questions you need any help people are going to be uh, more than more than happy to uh, to help you out on there and there's there's all these different sort of segments and sections oh i'll just bring it up let's let's have a look incoming guys please keep it clean i feel like davina this this is this is davina please do not swear we are live discord uh here we go and yes guys i don't use the app because i'm old and i like web let's have it oh things are going on here oh god what's going on um so so anyway this is let's have a quick tour of the the discord the less time i show this on stream the better um oh god i just want to see everyone's reaction to the um 
Where's the link? Is everyone reacting to it? Mega nut. Oh dear. Oh dear. Things are okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so you can see here, um, this is the general premise of it. So this segment here where all the bits are flashing up because you can't actually see my uh, my mouse. That's like the general uh, chat, chat box. Um, you can see people online on the right hand side. The center is the chat box. You can see pe people chatting away. Um, the very left hand side, so all these things on the left hand side, they're the different discords um, and private messages and stuff like that. And then uh, under the UK shooting bit, um, or, or here, these are all the different segments. So we've got the general shenanigans only for the brave. I'm warning you now. Um, we've got general shooting, obviously pretty self explanatory. Uh, we've got the garage got you know rimfire center fire shotgun air rifle diy reloading it's getting bigger um so on and so forth oh no <laughs> uh, and you can react to things like this so there's custom emojis um a few of which will be familiar we have the uh um the cringe emoji of course daniel smerald uh we have what's this one actually called again i'm gonna regret f where does it say what it's called Oh, that's actually called Connor, but the the PNG is actually called something different. We've got the police. Um, we've got uh, we've got me. We've got evil me. Uh, we've got uh, that's dark Gary. That's definitely dark Gary. We have uh, we have dark and light Gary, depending on what mood Gary is in, um, and other custom emojis. So it's all it's all pretty fun. It's all pretty good. Um, and and yeah, and then if you want to be really brave, you can get into the memes. I'm going to regret this. Definitely going to regret this. Oh dear. Um, yeah, it's just fun little place. You know, you can have a bit of fun on it. Keep it clean, unless I'm on there. Um, and yeah, just people people having a general conversation all about UK shooting. I mean, there's it's not just UK shooting people on there. Um, there's people from Australia, from America, all around the um, all around the place. And you get into some. Let's have a look at some of the Hall of Fame. I'm definitely going to regret this. Uh, okay, that's 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 pretty um, that's pretty tame. Probably script through that because I'll annoy most people with it. Um, okay, so Paul uh, updated his um, his uh, his clunge mobile. So obviously that sticker is going to pull in at least twenty percent more clunge. Uh, oh, that's Luke definitely admitting to some sort of Section Five offence. Okay, as. Ezra's sort of weird fetishes. Uh, of course, we're talking about um, Sir Captain Tom. Uh, I'm scared to keep, click on any of that. Um, oh, is this is this the blanket? I was tempted, but I'm gonna fuck. Yeah, yeah. That that that's the that's the puppy update for this week, right there. Anyway, moving moving out of uh, Discord. That's a that's a as as brave of a, as I'm gonna get. With showing you what's on that demented, uh, that demented Discord, um, back onto our our usual scheduling. But yeah, go and go and check it out. There is a uh, a link. Um, if you if you scroll up, I, I posted it a minute ago, but I'll post it again. Just go in, join, go and abuse some people. That's what everyone sort of seems to do. Go and have some fun, basically. Um, do you have black powder and muzzle loading? Absolutely. Um, it's actually one of the sort of unrestricted handguns that we can have uh, more famously uh, let's have a we, we're talking about alan westlake let's actually show you some of him some of his stuff alan west lake so it's westlake engineering is his um is his website um again like an absolute legend of the uk shooting scene um, you can see about his history, but he actually makes um, the Alpha revolvers. So these are muzzle. So they, they may look like a three fifty seven. Um, of course, they technically are a three fifty seven, but these are muzzle loading. So the cylinder is removable. You load up the cylinder separately, effectively being a muzzle muzzle loading, but obviously loading it from the the muzzle end of of the cylinder. Um, and then you can you can fire away. It, they're not the most accurate, but this is you know if you want a real sort of feeling 357 sort of handgun, that's sort of the closest you're going to get. 
Um, you just have to each cylinder because they're pressure bearing you need to have a slot for uh, let's see if they do anything more everything's machined here in in the UK and he's made all sorts of sort of clever ingenious uh, and here we go we we're talking about the buck mark um, a while ago so of course the, the top there that is the buck mark rifle and then he's converted it to be the long barrel pistol by lopping off um, the, the barrel and lopping off the uh, the big stock as well so he's still selling those but an absolute um, legend of the uh, of the shooting world you know target piss you know so he, they used to, he used to make proper proper guns as well and yeah so or maybe that's actually technically the first long barrel pistol um, but yeah you've got the Taurus it's 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 incredible uh, maybe I should get hold of some Alan Westlakes and do some proper videos on it but that that is a way to own like a proper handgun here in the UK it's just muzzle loading um, but isn't real black powder hard to get in the UK um, I don't believe it's uh, so I don't believe it's uh, hard um, to get hold of it it's just guns don't particularly use it um, that much anymore I think you you know black powder uh, or any sort of powder once you've got an FAC is pretty hard to uh, pretty easy to get hold of pretty straightforward you've got the authority for it you can just you can just crack on um, I believe anything under is it 15 kilos or 5 kilos under your FAC is fine um, but but yeah um, not not difficult at all. I don't I don't believe. Again, it's not an area of. Um, so it says no real black powder on FAC. A lot club members use them. Bisley has muzzle loading association too. Yeah, so um, most people use the modern powders on them. Yeah, uh, Pyrotex doesn't need uh, an explosive license, but some some gun shops will only sell you powders if you show them your FAC I, I can't remember the exact rules about it but I think you do legally need an FAC to be able to buy it just not an explosive explosives license um, if you keep under a certain limit actually that's uh, that's just for my own benefit that's a, a video idea um, let's go Yeah, so don't mind me, just making notes. Oscar Burr, I have done a poo. Are you a big boy now? Did you not have to use the potty this time? Did you use the big boy toilet? Good on you. Do you get a lollipop? No, no. Go back to mummy. It's fine. You're a big boy now. Give her a nice kiss. Um, are you still going? No, this is this is a simulation, Carl. Um, I'm not real anymore. This is just AI. It's It's evolved, you know. Um, Chris Lewis, sorry I'm late. Any news on the FAC net? No, no news unfortunately. Um, you will know about it. Trust me. Uh, as as soon as it is, um, as soon as there's any update. Um, just checking. Oh, oh, how can I forget? Um, so we were talking about stickers earlier, and I showed you the absolutely fantastic. These will be available on um, maglo.co.uk. Uh, and we'll be running a little special offer in the Discord. Um, so we had these delivered today. Yep, that's Connor's face on a sticker. Or you can go to onlyguns.co.uk and see that face constantly. Um, but as well as those stickers, we've had something really cool turn up. And I'm definitely going to be pinching a few of these. That is a so some of you might know Sticky Bolt, and they're known for the um, the fifteen twenty two sticker. Well, we just couldn't resist. That is, um, should I try and get something a bit better to put it behind? Um, that is a mag loaded fifteen twenty two in sticker form. Um, how close will it let me get? So in terms of the detail, you've got the uh the muzzle brake on there the carbon fiber handguard um the i know it's not mag load but the razor gen 2 uh vortex razor hd gen 2 by vortex you've got the uh ambi 
magazine release you've got the uh, ambi safety on there the magwell on there and the mag extension so absolutely everything that um magload offers for the 1522 is in sticker form so again those will be on the website and we think we're actually going to include these there's some bundles on magload um called it's the pro and element bundles and basically you get i think it's like a 20 percent discount if you buy all of the upgrade bits um as a bundle and we're i think we might be including these stickers in those bundles going forward and you should be able to buy the stickers separately if you want to add them to your collection but they're made by um uh, they're, they're made by uh, Sticky Bolt. They're made, you know, high quality. Like the the designs of of Sticky Bolt are absolutely awesome. So um, so yeah, keep an eye out on that. It's just all a bit, all a bit of fun, um, and we're we're very um, we are, are are very happy with it. Very very chuffed. If uh, if only for us rather than anybody else. Uh, ES confirmed VTuber. What context, Daniel? Context. Uh, reaction video for when you get your FAC. Ha! <laughs> yeah, like I like the optimism there. Uh, okay, so Pyrotex is basically the same thing, just less smoky. Yep. Um, what do you think about Betterton Solly shotguns? As I've never heard of them, I don't know. But let's have a let's have a wee look, shall we? I have to say, I've, I I don't have a lot of experience with them. I haven't really heard of them. I mean, they look Italian. Oh, they look very. Do look very Beretta-like, actually? Let's look at the silver. Yeah, well, I mean, they they look nice enough. They look. They look high quality, but I've I've never shot one, never had one in hand, so I can't unfortunately comment, you know, that much further. Um, I thought you had to register deactivated firearms with the Home Office. Um, there was, again, it's not you know I don't have any DX. There there was a thing um, a while ago about sort of a registration or notification, um, and it would basically make. Um, yeah, I, th I think there was something that that is actually ringing a bell. I probably should be hotter on this, um, and it. I think you did actually. I don't think you're. I don't think you're wrong, because um, there was there was basic. I think, or maybe they were proposing it and they never actually bought it in. But there was something a while ago where we we basically figured that if they bought it in, if you forgot, you know, there's some people with like two hundred plus DX in their collections. And they have stuff up in the attic, in the in the wardrobe, under the desk, littered all around the house. And, you know, if, if you've never been required to keep track of them, and then suddenly you have to go and notify the police of every single one you have, it would be so easy to forget about one or two. You know, you could go around the house and, you know, like, think about how many times you might lose your phone a day. Never mind if you've got dozens and dozens of DX scattered around the house. Um, but I do... I, I do remember something very very similar about you know that's definitely ringing a bell um so definitely worth checking um and i always say to people uh i, I always say to people look like if if you're in any doubt like i will try and give as much information um as much advice as possible but if you're in any doubt go to your firearms department you know phone up the your local county's fire, firearms department and ask them you know because and but always get it in writing whatever they say confirm it in writing 100 percent um uh acid mahmoud uh you sent uh an email uh yes i did see that come to oh i've got so many emails let's uh you know why not you just you just message let's have a look what you're saying uh your firearms license do you, I mean, do you want me to answer it now or just what well, you said on answer it, um, answer it after the stream? So yeah, I mean, sounds. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll get, I'll get, I'll get back to that um, uh, after the stream for you. Um, but thanks for dropping that off. I've marked it, so I shouldn't, um, I shouldn't forget it. Fingers crossed. 
um i I, I say to most people if you you know this is one of the frustrations of having many different platforms so you know twitter instagram facebook youtube email i'm on reddit a lot as well um if any of you guys need to get hold of me or you know you've got a question the best place is email english shooting um at gmail.com um or callum at magload.co.uk either of those two because i have a flag system if if there's an email that i need to get back to i'll flag it it might take me a few days um because literally the whole of today has just been back and forth on emails um it's just been absolutely nuts today so it might take a few t- you know a little while but i do see everything um that comes through and, and you know i'd say i respond to like 99 percent of everything that comes through i would do my utmost to, to help people out where where possible mr top gun 303 uh shotgun get a bretta 100 percent um i can highly remember <laughs> i can highly recommend bretta of course it is down to personal preference you know some people love browning i can't you know i, I can't necessarily poo poo browning they're still quite good guns very popular very rugged you just need to go and get some in your hands and, and really find the one that you you like but yeah absolutely um beretta really in my opinion really can't go wrong who remembers brill cream do you know i i oh know i think it was dax that i ended up finding the other day oh that's right might be talking about like dax um sorry brill cream but anyone used that before? I think this stuff is like as old as the sun. Um, that, and seriously, this has been like, is there a best used by, oh, it's, it only went out of date last year. I'm surprised about that. I should probably just chuck that away to be to be honest. Um, did you see Donut Operator got some guns stolen? A modded glonk. Um, that's, that's what I'm gonna refer to him now as. And a, and a Triarch uh, 2011. No, I didn't see that. Um, I mean, I, I, I follow Dodo Operator on um, on YouTube. I watch a lot of his videos fairly regularly. But um, let's go. Let's have a... Has, has he done a video uh, on it? Dodo Operator. Let's see if there's anything. Because I'm only doing this so that I remember after the after the stream um or was it twitter he hasn't there's no um there's no recent videos it's on his twitter okay i'll go and check that out off well let's why don't we why don't we explore together guys oh god we're gonna go we're gonna go to where the sun doesn't shine we're gonna go to the dark place we're going in we're going in guys i really hate twitter we just end up arguing with idiots half the time. Um, let's have a look at this. We can have... Oh, recents. Yeah, let's have a look. Uh, I mean, we were talking about it earlier. Again, Duncan is... He is pretty good. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. Let's go... Um, how do you use... There we go. Do not... Op... Pareta... Let's see what's going on with Donut then. Uh, oh, dearie me, Donut. Oh, dearie me. So this is worse than Discord. Um, Where does it say? Really? Is he, is it, are you guys just messing? I can't see anything about... Nope, no, nope. can't see anything about um about stolen guns. Uh, anyway, that's that's about it. Shall we? Shall we have a bit of a laugh? I've been actually, I've been thinking of doing this for a while, and this is sort of um. Yes, yes, Jake Paul. Yes, I don't follow him. I just like to try and keep up to date with shit that's going on and. Yes, like most people, I really want to see him go against Conor McGregor. It would be awesome. So this this is what I used to um, this is what I used to spend a lot of my time doing, and why I don't like 
um going on twitter because i do stuff like this what you end up doing is you go like uk gun ban and then you read some of the uh the cancerous comments on here um so homicides in the uk are the same now as they were before gun ban oh okay also rising in New Zealand, Australia and Canada, which have strict gun laws. So it looks like you're the one with the absurd platform. Okay, well, I can't disagree with that. There's one thing I'd like to take notice of, that is the UK never really was a gun country to begin with, so there wasn't much opposition to the banning, even though most of the firearms were invented here and obviously the americans actually got their second amendment from the uk but ignoring that um now consider the us i can guarantee about 30 percent of the us citizens would reject such a ban and fight back violently do not condone do not condone in minecraft in minecraft um so we've got never a this you can just see how you can end up oh no that that's definitely not let's get rid of that um london is not britain that's like saying crime is up in new york so it must be everywhere in the u.s also this is very recently overall it's all people just replying i want to see some just real fucktardery um just original posts oh, what is it will this stop like no i don't want to see it no Ugh. let's go bands let's try that one Like it's ba basically like the number one comment is always, but guns are banned in the UK, and you're like, nope, wrong, wrong. Meanwhile, like I said, comparing before and after gun bans in the same country like the UK, before. like these are actually like people seem to have clued up on Twitter. Like, what is going on? People actually seem to know what's going on. Um. Yep. Yeah why why is it despite gun bans violent crime in the uk is increasing uh that's because like banning firearms doesn't actually stop crime but you know new news flash neighbors um oh you want to talk about um actually quick uh quick um oh if you want to if you're looking here we go if you're looking for retardation um go on the gun control network i don't know if my blood pressure can take it but we're um we, we will go and have a look uh, anyway if you want to pass time uk gun bans or banned or whatever go on there you will find some some hilarious comments but even better than that the national crime agency and for those of you that don't know what the national crime agency is um it is a uh, it's basically the equivalent of actually it's not on here it's on here um it's basically the equivalent of of the FBI. They deal. The, the National Crime Agency was uh, rebranded. It used to be called um, Soccer, and that was for the um, serious and organ organized crime uh, agency. Um, but despite being, you know, a serious police organization, oh, that's not working. Um, being a pol serious police organization, they thought it would be good. To, to spend taxpayers money on this advert yes yeah that, that that's this is what we have at the moment obviously you know there are just so many guns easily to get hold of that people are just so confused about the gun laws like to make this statement it's illegal to possess most firearms without a license in the uk the only way the the, the only reason that you would need to to put that out there is if it was so easy to get hold of a gun people were like almost accidentally getting hold of them like oh look another you know another glock just magically fell from the sky into my hand oh i, I have no idea what i should do with this oh look oh thank you national crime agency i wouldn't have known that i'd go to prison for having this firearm otherwise it's like this this is what they do they take our tax money they spend it buying back Mars and Lever release, and then they go and spend it on ads like this. It's illegal to possess most fire. Like no shit, Sherlock. Like, th like most. Oh God, most people in the UK don't even think that any guns are legal. Why would you think there was a problem with people 
mistakenly thinking you didn't need a license. Like the general, like the general consensus is that all guns are banned. Therefore, the default is if people find guns, they're gonna call the police or stay well away from them. Like, like, have we really we reached this point in society where messages like this are necessary? Like, really, have, have we really reached this point? Because this is just utterly ridiculous. And and then going, you know, even more than that. Did you know a sizable proportion of all shootings in the UK are from converted, modified, and reactivated firearms smuggled through the channel crossing? So why the fuck are you taking away Mars and Lever release then? I mean, it's, it's the National Crime Agency. They're, they're literally saying, like, this is the problem. The, the problem is converted, modified, reactivated firearms smuggled through the channel crossings. But how many millions have they just spent on Mars and Lever release? Seriously. Like, you can't write this. You can't, you just can't write it. You know, you only get one shot in life. Don't blow it. Oh, it's what happens. It's what, it's what happens when you put a 20 gauge into a, into a 12 and put a 12 behind it, isn't it? You know, you only had one shot, mate. Utterly ridiculous. I just like, why are they wasting our t like our money? You know, what other? I didn't look much further. I sort of gave up the will to live by that point. Anyway, um, oh, here we go. Uh, fight against unlawful firearms in the UK. Yeah, yeah. Of course, guns. You know, know the know the law. Possessing illegal. Fu oh, oh no, they didn't. Oh no, they didn't. Can I stop that? They... They... Uh, uh, they, they oh, pl where, where is it? Where is it? I need to see that again. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Possessing illegal firearms is a crime. It's sort of in the statement illegal firearms. I mean, it wouldn't be legal if they were illegal, right? By definition, it's a crime. Possess... It, like... Oh, God... I I really want to meet I really want to meet the the NCA like director for marketing because this is just golden possessing illegal firearms is a crime like oh oh god I didn't realize oh silly me like oh, just seriously lose the will to live sometimes anyway um sorry guys just went down the rabbit hole there make o only guns a Basque trade member. Basque approved. That needs Ollie. Do no, not Ollie. Captain, um, Captain Crack, get on it. Maybe I should make. No, no you should make it redirect to uh, you to redirect to Basque, but with like a hologram of like Connor. If you can do that, I don't know. I'm not a web designer. Like, have a hologram of Connors in there imposed. I don't know. Anyway. Logan is going against Connor. Oh dear. Doggo a turn is on it. Just having some pretty um having some pretty good conversations. Um I think what was that? Oh yeah, so it was the NCA shooting discord. Yeah. Um again just to say guys the um the firearm safety consultation. I've I've really I've really just lost the will to live after going through that. Like, I bet, I bet it costs them like ten thousand pounds to have that video made. Possessing illegal firearms is a crime. Anyway, um, I'm gonna have to be honest. I'm probably gonna wrap it up there, mainly because I um, uh, I need a wee. But before you all go, make sure you like and subscribe if you're not already. And on and on. Didn't you almost lose your uh, FAC a few years back for suggesting self-defense should be legali legally? recognized um i don't do things by halves and i don't almost do something um i, I did actually lose my fac a few years back for suggesting uh, self-defense should be legally recognized um that that you know it was around the paris attacks talking about guns for self-defense it's not it's not it's not you know police don't like it basically you know it's basically if you're a firearms owner in the uk 
suggesting any changes to firearms law is a no-no. Just be very careful about it, certainly if it's around um, uh, self-defense. Um, funnily enough, your name is actually Ollie. Okay, that, well, so it's Ollie and Ollie. So it's the two Ollies. There's definitely some sketches there, right? Um, but yeah, so uh, I'm going to wrap it up there, guys. It's been an awesome, uh, awesome stream. It was up, off to a bit of a rocky start, uh, <laughs> but we uh, we got there in the end. Um, I've, I've quite enjoyed it as always. If there's any suggestions, any topics, anything you would you would like to see me do on the streams, then drop me a message, drop me an email, get in contact, and I'll be more than uh, more than happy to help out um, and uh, and take any suggestions as well. If you so, if you've got any questions, I'll be happy to help out. And if you've got any suggestions, I'll take them on board and try and and grow the stream. But of course, like and subscribe before you leave. Just a quick heads up: a few videos coming out in the near future. The fifteen twenty two versus Lantac LAS. F L A S F 15 video, um, and I'll also be doing an in depth video on the uh, Holland and Holland takeover by Beretta and sale of you know from Chanel. Um, and suggestions from you, I will be doing some research on the uh, the Scottish air gun certificates and potentially a full video on that, um, and uh, black powder laws uh, as well. Um, and I've definitely got um. Well, I've been I've had a video in the works for a while, which is the top five long barrel pistols. Uh, hopefully, that should be out uh, very soon as well. Um, so yeah, I uh, I really appreciate everyone joining and chilling out for this stream. It's been uh, it's been fun. I hope you've you've enjoyed it. Um, again, thanks for everyone that's um, donated, stayed around, chatted, and all that. The stream will be available to watch again, um, you know, after it's ended. So if you've missed anything, want to rewatch anything. Then, then please do. But otherwise, just make sure you're subscribed, and you'll see all the future videos and future live streams that um, that we we do. And I will at some point. Connors will be making a return on the live stream. We are trying to get him back. Um, it hopefully it won't be too much longer. But there we go, guys. Thank you very very much. Um, have uh, an incredible week. Stay safe. Try and shoot where you can. Obviously, within code, um, COVID guidelines. Keep well. And of course, as always, I hope to see you all very soon.